Six Ages Gaming is brought to you by GamersGauntlet.net. Check them out for all your singles, sealed product, and play mats. Hey guys, welcome to another Six Sages Gaming deck spotlight. This is Matt bringing you the Observer or the Timeline Arsonist deck. Um, so this one has been a lot of fun to play. Um, I'm generally someone who absolutely hates red decks, if you know anything about me. Um, it's usually not the game plan that I like to be doing. I'm more of like a mid-rangey, grindy kind of player. And for red, that's actually what this deck does. I know it might have like, oh, you're playing all these low curves and whatnot. Um, but the way that the resonators interact with your opponent's board state or with what you're doing or what your game plan is, it definitely plays like more of a mid-range deck. So first, I'll talk about the rule a little bit, show you guys the stone base, uh, and talk about the importance of each card, and then I'll get into the main deck. Don't have a side deck for this one, but I'll talk about some you know, highlights, what cards I might use, things of that nature. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the ruler himself. So first we have the Observer himself. Uh, you'll notice this ruler doesn't have a lot of text on the front side, but he does have that very high cost of 12, but it costs one less for each removed card in your remove from game zone. So it definitely is the, you know, he gives you an idea of what the type of deck you need to build in order to flip him. Uh, and probably a good thing because his other side actually has a lot of uh, value on it. Um, giving your resonators all swiftness, target attack, and first strike is insanely relevant, especially if you take this in a more mid rangey kind of match. Um, giving your either big beaters or things that might not normally have target attack or first strike, sure they're going to have swiftness if you're playing red most likely, like Susan's or Guilty Ray. Um, but this card really does a lot. And what I really like is this God Art. Um, as you see, I added a Demon Sword. Um, if you're playing this on, you know, turn six, um, you know, you have six stones, two to flip, and then four for his God Art, um, and you will ping their entire board for easily 1,500 damage, if not more. So he acts as a very aggressive ruler that also board wipes and then swings for 1,000. So that's why I tried to make the curve a little bit lower in this one. Going into the stones, uh, we... You know, automatically play for the Disasters Memoria. This not only allows us to, you know, tap for red, which is our whole deck is red, obviously that's really important, but the second effect, it lets us remove the top card of our main deck from the game. So, you'll see, especially like on there's, uh, on, on turn two, you know, if we flip a stone early, generally we're playing like another one drop and we want to remove another card, really push for that magical number of 10 removed cards as quickly as possible. So we have four of those. We have one pure little redstone, uh, simply because they're all red, we name red, taps for red, and then we can buff our guys by 200, so why not auto-include it? So Anton, this one's for you, I actually found it. Um, so there's my pure stone, and then nothing special but five uh, flame magic stones, and also so happy to have the Valhalla Full Arts finally in the United States, and I really hope we get to finish this cycle, even though we haven't seen the three other ones yet, but just basic redstones, no other color, nothing fancy. So. Uh, let's get into the regalia we're playing. Uh, two Demon Sword. Uh, this was something I added more or less just because, is, as odd that sounds. Um, so Signs of the Future is a very real card, and you'll see that we have a lot of one-drops that clog up our board and can't actually do anything. Um, so in some matchups, you just need a way to banish them, and you don't always have Guinevere. Uh, so this is just another way to hopefully play around SWAT, uh, Signs of the Future. But again, it gives our ruler swiftness. Anyway, so again, on that magical turn seven, when you have six stones, you can flip for two red, play the Demon Sword, have four up for his God Heart, and then swing for at least 1,000 damage, or 1,200, because you're going to tap one of these once. Um, and it can really just kill your opponent out of nowhere when they thought that they were safe. And then four of the his Orb Ifrit Glass. Um, words cannot really express how good this card is. Uh, so you get to mill a card for free, and then you get two cards back. Now, I understand everyone's like, oh, but we really want to push for 10 cards in our remove from game zone, you know, we want to get to that number as quickly as possible. Yeah, you get to that number pretty quick, and in fact, you go over it. So it's okay to pull two cards out of that zone if they're going to win you the game. Um, and, you know, I like that you can, you can do it at instant speed, so you always have the option of, you know, I mill a card, let's say you have three up, mill a card, do I, have, did I hit the magical card? Sure, then I'll crack the orb and go get two cards back uh, from my remove zone. Like, this card is very good. Uh, but the one mistake I see a lot of people doing with it is if you're playing against a blue deck and you suspect that they have Hera, please don't play this until you can actually get value out of it. Like, if you're just milling it for one, you've wasted the card, and this is, you know, probably one of the most important cards in the deck because it lets us retrieve from that zone. So please don't just run this out there unless it's, one, getting you to ten. It's like somehow you did the math and you just have to play it. Or two, you have the two will open for the second ability so you can actually get value out of it other than just milling a card. 
Uh, a card I begrudgingly, but it just happens to be in here. Uh, two Memory of Disappearance. Um, it's chance speed, it only costs one, it lets you get a card back. Um, I'm still not totally in love with the card, but it does act as split three and four. It acts as another keeper if we want to get keepers five and six. Um, for the math of the deck, it just does a lot. So it's one of those things that I wouldn't run more than two, I think, because you're probably going to find one early on anyways. Or you can just do silly stuff like uh, if it or one of them back, then get another card back if you really need to. Uh, if you want to get like extra cards, I mean, obviously, you can just if it orb the two things you actually want, but you can play this, you know, if it orb, get one of these back, mill some more cards, get another card back is what I meant. So it's still something that uh, you probably have to play it, um, but it is underwhelming if you don't actually have what you need uh, in that zone. So it's something that you don't want to get till later. Uh, we play three Demon Flame. Uh, I had four and cut one uh, just because it's only good if we play that Time Emissary. Um, and sometimes otherwise just getting another 500 damage if we combo with uh, Scald or something like that. Uh, the two drop keeper is really good. So yes, we don't want to have another keeper to play on one and three, but playing your two drop with leaving one of these up, uh, you know, usually it'll only ping for like two or 300 damage, but then you play Demon Flame, you just destroy whatever it is you're trying to kill. So, um, you know, might, maybe kind of, sort of should be a four of, but I wanted to add in some other cards. So uh, feel free to change the numbers. This is the updated yet untested list with just some of the things that I wanted to uh, add, or I played two games with it. Uh, speed on the time emissary, here he is. Uh, the biggest issue I had with this card um, is it's great. It's it's probably the best enabler outside of the dragon, but I removed the dragon because everyone's... I still think Susan's going to be a thing. We'll see after this weekend. Um, but I think Susan's still going to be floating around, so you don't want to open up yourself to be getting Susan down turn three. Um, he can ping something for 200. If you're on the play and they have an Elvish Priest, then you can kill their Elvish Priest turn one, not, not having to waste a Thunder or a Demon Flame, um, which is, can also be very, very relevant. And again, he just lets you remove the top card. So there's actually been a couple times before I added the Demon Swords, uh, I had to ping himself just to kill him to play around signs, uh, and that felt really, really awkward. So make sure that you're mindful of how many of these that you're rushing out there at a time. Uh, then Keeper of the Present, and I can never say their name, so I'm just saying past, present, future. Um, this one's actually probably my favorite outside of the three drop. Uh, so for me, it goes three, one, two. I really like playing this card early, um, even though that's not always correct depending on the matchup, just to filter your hand. Um, sometimes your hands get locked and it's really awkward and you're like, yeah, I don't want to pitch a card. But the thing to keep in mind is you can always get it back later. So, um, you know, it might not be the most aggressive card and, you know, it's probably not all the time to play it. Like, I would rather play Emissary than Guinevere than this card for my turn one plays. So, it's just something that helps you filter your hand when you otherwise draw a card that you're like, well, I really don't need this in, in any shape or form. So, I'll pitch it and I'll get to draw another card off of it for free. So, a lot of this really is just card filtering. Uh, and then, four of Guinevere. Anytime we play a more mid range, grindy kind of deck and we don't have Reflect, you kind of just have to play Guinevere. Um, it gets rid of your time emissaries. Uh, it gets rid of some other things that you might not just want, or if you're trying to play around signs, it helps you get play around signs. If they go to play a removal spell, you get value out of it that way. So, uh, as much as I love and hate this card, with A, without Reflect, and B, because we're a more mid range strategy, I definitely think this is more the type of deck for that Guinevere really wants to be in. And, you know, the whole reason I wanted to build this deck is just because all these guys are full art. So, I think once Susan rotates, I will definitely be coming back to this deck. Going to our two drops, we have two, uh, the two drop future, or two drop keeper, keeper of the future, scold, or schooled, however you pronounce it. I'm going with scold. Um, I guess I realize it's only a 5 5, it's not going to kill anything, uh, but it becomes an 8 8 swiftness later in the game, which has been surprisingly relevant to catch my opponents off guard and just kill them by going like two drop, two drop into just any other one drop, uh, especially if you have your guy flipped already to give your 1000, 1000, one drop. Uh, swiftness, which is pretty good, turns out. Um, you know, it's one of those things that it just it helps you mill cards. So because we can't play the dragon, you just kind of have to play four of these because you still want a card that drops on two. You know, it's a five five, which might not be the most impressive thing, but again, it's something that enables our plan and really helps us accelerate the deck when otherwise it would struggle a little bit. Then lastly, uh, two of split heaven and earth. I originally had one, um, but sometimes you just don't happen to see that one of, even now, even with all the milling and whatnot, like I've, I've come very close to in the longer games milling out myself, but um, this is something I just decided was a two of, especially because some games you just want to go double split. So you can get one back, hold one in your hand, double split your opponent for game and just kill them that way. But 
um, especially because these games are going to go longer. I think there's a lot of strength to having some number of split. I know some people were running just one, and that's probably fine too. Uh, now the real MVP of the deck, the Keeper of the Past. Uh, I call it the one drop, the future one, my bad. Um, the Keeper of the... Keeper of the Future... Yeah, Keeper of the Past. I think I messed up one of the names. Sorry about that. Um, the be huge benefit about this one is it doubles the damage that gets removed, and it targets J slash Resonators. So if you have a problematic uh, J ruler that you're just having problems with, then you can set up your graveyard in a way that you're going to be able to kill their J Ruler uh, with this card, especially one of them. Uh, one of my favorite combos is Flame King Shout for this deck, because Flame King Shout has to resolve, go to the graveyard, and then her ability will resolve, letting you exile something for 600 damage, plus if you have another 2-drop, um, that's easily 1,000 damage that you're doing to something. So it's going to kill a lot of things, it turns out. Um, you know, the one thing I wish I could is add another like 3-drop to the deck, just so you could 12-something. Um, but I don't think that's realistic, even though we have uh, eight, of, eight of them in the deck. So putting more cards in the remove zone is always a good thing. The other three drop resonator is Athena. Uh, again, because the game's going late and you just want another body that can get huge out of nowhere. Um, even with one ping, so playing this on turn four, she hits for 10 damage, um, assuming that they don't block or anything. So hitting for 25% of your opponent's life, 25% of your opponent's life on turn uh, for or in a turn, not counting anything else that you have on board uh, is a pretty strong strategy too. And then last but not least, just to give our, uh, that just again, I cannot in mention how insanely well it combos with the three drop, Flame King Shout, so deal for with something with Flame King Shout, then you at least get to exile this, so it's um, going to be a thousand in total, sorry about that. Um, and then just any other exile card you want to exile, so I mean you can kill plenty of Gwybers with this combo. Um, and if you can kill Gwyber, obviously you're killing most other things in the format with this deck or with that two card combo. Yeah, it takes a little bit to set up. You still get the swing for eight. Chances are that 800 damage is going to connect plus whatever early drops you played. So the thing I really like about this deck is, again, turn four, turn five, depending on what you open with, out of nowhere you have just a huge board presence of 1100, 1100s, 1010s, or 800, 800s um, that can just really kill your opponent out of nowhere if they're not expecting it or if they haven't really play tested against this deck before. So. Um, as far as sideboarding cards, some of the other things I thought about, and I wish I brought a couple copies of them with me, but I didn't, so I'm very sorry about that. Um, Little Dread, I think, is something that might see more play if the, the format does slow down and you want to see more copies uh, of being able to steal your opponent's big thing and then sacrificing it to Leviton, you know, things of that nature. But um, I definitely think that the, the deck is a lot of fun to play. Oh, Gareth, sorry, that's the card I was going to mention. Uh, was Gareth because if you pump him and you get to have like a little red pure stone, make him a 10-10, uh, and then just being able to freely crash into stuff uh, can feel very good too. And again, he's very difficult to deal with unless they're playing their own keeper and they somehow deal the 800 damage uh, to him in one shot. So uh, the last card I was going to recommend would be Rapid Decay, the one drop, kill, three drop, resonate or less, especially if you see more of these guys because you need a, <laughs> you need a removal spell and those happen to kill all of the keepers. Uh, even though they become insanely powerful. Yes, it's chance speed, but, you know, we can't have it all. As much as we would like to, can't have it all. So, thanks for watching, guys. Shout out to GamersGauntlet.net for getting all our Valhalla pro uh, mon monthly promos in. I'm really happy to have these promo stones. Again, I can't even begin to express how beautiful these are. Uh, make sure to drop us a like, comment down below, let us know what you'd like about the video, what kind of rulers you might want to see next. Uh, I think we might be doing another Kaguya deck uh, coverage soon. And uh, make sure to check us out on Facebook as, at, as well at Six Sages Gaming. Uh, and of course, you can always follow us on Twitter as well at FOW101. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and leave us a comment with what you thought of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to Six Sage Gaming and check out some of the Deck Spotlights, Dual Series, and Force of Community videos that are already on the channel. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter, so feel free to find us there. Lastly, if you have a deck that you would like featured in a video, be sure to drop us a comment below. Until next time, take it easy.